What's up ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this POV review by Autodop NL. My name is Max and today we are taking a look at the first plug-in hybrid AMG on the market. Uh, of course the new C63 is coming as well with basically the same principle, the same kind of tech. But this is the big daddy of all AMGs. It is the most powerful AMG ever made, 843 horsepower, 1470 newton meters of torque peak, which is just absolutely ridiculous. And well, today I'm going to show you around it. We'll talk a bit about all the tech that is in this car because they have done a couple of very clever things. It is really cool some of the stuff that they have done with this car so i'll show you the interior as well and then we'll take it for a drive towards the autobahn for an autobahn blast this really is a very important car for amg because it is the first one of the new amg basically electrifying amg and the thing they have done with this gt63 s e-performance is that the battery power the electric power boosts both performance and fuel economy so it is better on its fuel economy less co2 emissions but also much much more powerful than its gt63 s brother the internal combustion version with 639 horsepower so which is already pretty crazy i mean that is already a lot of power and then this adds another 200 horsepower to that so that is pretty damn insane so let's start at the front as we always do uh, the thing is compared to a gt63 you don't really see the differences but they have changed the front bumper so we've got the panamericana grill but then the lower part is different more of an amg gt look and then the both side intakes are wider than on the regular gt63 and then you have these three fins here that direct air into those radiators so very aggressive front end very pretty front end if you ask me i think this is a very successful design the shark nose it is such an imposing car and i really really like that the color is obsidian black Normally I'm not the biggest fan of black cars, but I think it does suit this car very well combined with these new AMG wheels. And when I say new, I actually mean old because these are new wheels, but they are so retro with that black inside and then that sort of aluminium outer line. It, it does make it look like AMGs from like the 90s and the zeros, which is very nice. They also have like an arrow blade AMG wheel, which is also super cool. So yeah amg thumbs up for the wheels uh, these days because they are looking really good also on the eqe and the eqs you can get those aero blade amg wheels and then behind that we've got carbon ceramic brakes as standard on this car now this car also has four stage regeneration uh, braking regeneration so you can go for zero basically sailing and then one two three different levels of regen but that does mean that your brake feel is completely gone. So you do have uh, ceramic brakes, but the feel is almost absent. So you just have to stomp on them and just trust that the brake performance is there because it really is. Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires wrapped around that 275 section at the front. Then we've got a little fake vent here, which I'm not a big fan of. Below that V8 by Turbo e-performance badge. One of the very few things you can see on the exterior, the fact that this is an e-performance carbon mirror caps there. And then at the rear, look at those wheels, beautifully dished. That is just a retro look. I really dig that. I think it looks super, super cool. 315 section rear tires, which you will go through in no time. This car eats up rear tires like nothing else. It is just hilarious. And then at the rear, we've got a red GT 63S badge to let you know that's an e-performance carbon wing here on the back as well. And then we've got a couple of issues. And number one is I'm just going to keep saying that this is stupid, but that is not an exhaust. You can see the exhaust in there. This is just nothing. Uh, number one, stupid. Number two, could they have figured out a better way to do the charge port this is the charge port how freaking ugly is that i mean couldn't they have just done like a fuel filler cap on the other side or 
I don't know. They should have thought of something better. This is just so hideous. Uh, and then number three is that this is, look at how thin that is. That, that, that is not good. 231,000 euros in the Netherlands, this car. And it, it, it feels like a 1990s Kia. That is not good. Uh, other than that, yeah, the rear, I'm not the biggest fan of the rear of this car. Martijn actually just figured it out. He said, it looks like a Chrysler Crossfire. Uh, and then I said, it is the SRT6 with a big wing. Because that is the same awkward look of, you know, the pooping dog famously uh, said by Jeremy Clarkson. It's not as bad as the Crossfire, but it has that same awkwardness, like something is off. And I'm not sure why, but yeah, it's not my favorite part of the car, the rear. Okay. Check out the engine. All right, so that is the four liter V8 by turbo. As I said, 639 horsepower and 900 newton meters of torque. So that is unchanged from the GT 63S, but then a couple of very, very clever things happen. So it keeps the four wheel drive, the 4Matic Plus, from the GT 63S. It also has drift mode, so you can completely disconnect the front axle. But the clever thing is, and this is quite complicated, but uh, bear with me. So we've got the engine right there. Then we've got the regular four wheel drive system. And then at the rear, you've got a very compact electric motor with incorporated into that a two speed gearbox and an electronically controlled limited slip diff. And this powers the rear axle directly, but it can also send power to the front wheels. There's a six kilowatt hour battery pack sitting on top of that electric motor. So that is like right there. That is also why you lose a bit of trunk space. So it sits, that is probably it, this. So it sits on top of that. And it is a direct liquid cooled battery pack, which means that uh, they can extract and recoup energy very, very quickly. And this is actually legitimate Formula One technology. This They have learned this from Formula One, how to extract a lot of electric power and regenerate it very, very quickly without it getting too hot because it operates in a window, say the max is like 45 degrees Celsius and it can go above that, but it cools down really quickly because it's direct liquid cooled. So uh, the battery pack is not like cooled as one, but there are 560 cells in the battery pack that look basically look like regular batteries, like cylindrical. And then the liquid flows through the entire battery pack, cooling the 560 cells down very quickly. And that means that you have, well, one, you have consistent performance because when the pack gets too hot, performance is gone. Sometimes when the battery pack gets too hot, some cars just you know, shut down altogether. And that is the thing with this car. They boost performance with that electric motor. And that is why they thought about all this stuff, how to extract a lot of power from it. So when you go to race mode is when the recuperation is the most aggressive. It only delivers full battery power when you're on it. So when you are just driving around on the track, like doing a couple of warm up laps, for instance, the battery is regenerating, recuperating energy so quickly through the brakes, but also from the engine. And that means that you always have, basically always have that power available. So it's a 6.1 kilowatt hour battery, as I said, and then you've got 204 horsepower and 320 newton meters from it. So that means that you have a total of 843 horsepower and 1470 newton meters in boost because it only delivers that 1470 for 10 seconds. And that is when you are full throttle, 10 seconds, you've got that max power. That is how this 2400 kilo car goes from zero to 100 in 2.9 seconds, uh, which is just mental and then top speed is 316 kilometers an hour but because they added that weight on top of the rear axle so uh, the battery pack weighs 89 kilos in total it adds 460 kilos to the gt63 <laughs> so that is pretty insane but because most of it is on the rear axle they actually improved the weight distribution so it's now 50 50 and it used to be 54 
46. So that is a lot of info. I hope you're still with me, but I had to explain this just while standing here because that makes it a little bit easier for me as well. All right, so interior spec, absolutely lovely. Brown and black leather, a little bit of Alcantara, beautiful AMG badge there. That is actually, that is super nice. Logo on the headrest as well. And then matte carbon in here, of course, a lot of leather everywhere, contrast stitching. And this car optionally also has the first class rear seat configuration. I don't know exactly what that is, probably two separate seats and then little remote here, screen, beautiful matte carbon there as well. Uh, yeah, it is a very, very comfortable car. Uh, I mean, it is a continent cruiser, this. You will do crazy distances in very short amounts of time because it is just relentless power and a lot of comfort. Burmester audio as well, super nice speakers. Yeah, look at this, this is just so nice. That leather with the stitching, carbon, a little bit of aluminium, speakers beautiful, and then the brown leather, and then black leather down here as well. Gorgeous. So, steering wheel AMG as well, with Alcantara, and uh, we've got the buttons right here, as you know. This one is for the driving mode, so you twist that knob, goes to Sport, Sport Plus, Race. But if you press it, you can adjust the recuperation. So as I said, it's got four settings, zero, one, two, and three. And then on the left side here, we've got the gearbox, traction control, AMG dynamics, camera, springs, sound, stuff like that. All right, let's take it for a drive. So we also have an electric driving mode right there. Uh, you can drive up to 130 kilometers an hour, I think. And um, they claim that the electric range is 10 to 12 kilometers as well. Normally you know that that is a bit less, but as I said, that is not really the point of this car and not really the point of the electrification of this car. So they did that so you can, you know, get out of town easily, electrically or short distances, no problem. But it is not there for range. So when we switch to race mode, now everything is geared towards delivering as much power as possible as quickly as possible. So as I said, they have designed this package to charge and discharge as much electric power as possible. So. When I'm not fully on it, as I said, it is actually charging up the batteries. So you can see the battery pack in the bottom left corner there. Not sure if you guys can see that, but you can just see the batteries filling up, which is very a very satisfying thing to know that when you're not absolutely flooring it, keeping it above 3000 RPM in race mode, the batteries fill up so quickly that you have another, you know, short discharge available so if you go to the track you would do two warm-up laps battery fills up and then you can do a couple of hot laps with full power which is pretty damn smart okay so traction control off and uh, we'll do a launch control 2.9 seconds zero to 100 oh, damn. <laughs> That is outrageously quick, 2.9 seconds. We actually did 2.9 seconds. This thing weighs 2,400 kilos. The way it just unleashes that power on all four wheels, absolutely insane. Now, we also have drift mode, as I said. So with traction control off, you hit manual, both pedals, drift mode, confirm. All right, so now everything goes to the rear axle and it just becomes this tire tire munching madman it is really really crazy the rate at which this car will eat up its rear tires i've got them nice and warm now but if we drive a little bit slower so second gear it just eats them up i mean 
old school AMGs would eat up their rear tires with the amount of power they had. But this is... <laughs> what the hell is that? So sometimes it does need to think about what is happening. As you could see, it would give me full power. And then I think it was the angle was so big that it just decided, nope. And then it said, okay, you're good now. And then I got an extra boost, but it is outrageous. We also experienced slight power cuts uh, from second to third gear when we did launch control a couple of times. So I'm not sure if that is just an issue with this car or that the car is just, you know, thinking about what the hell is happening. I can imagine that it is a lot for the car happening at the same time. So it might be that. But I mean, 99% of the time it just behaves very well. But before we hit the Autobahn, I just want to let you know that we're doing a collaboration with PetrolVibes.com, which might be the ultimate gift for yourself or any other petrol head. You can see them here in our sim room. Uh, we've got our own Ferrari 599 on the wall there. Unfortunately, we sold the F12, which is on that side. And one of my favorites, the Ford GT. This one is particularly nice but you can make one of your own car they have a lot in stock at petrolvibes.com and because we are doing a collaboration you now get a discount if you use code autotop and l10 on your favorite wall art go check it out and enjoy the video so gearbox in drive we've got the nine speed automatic gearbox which i have to say is not the best shifts not super quick response to the pedals sometimes not that great and you know as always it feels like the gearbox is just a little bit behind everything and that is just an issue with amgs with mercedes cars in general that you know they just haven't fixed that yet but again most of the time it behaves really well So top speed, 316 kilometers an hour, and the car has absolutely no problem getting there. 100 to 200, mega, mega quick, 6.2 seconds, which is pretty damn quick. Um, I mean, a Porsche Panamera Turbo SE Hybrid does seven and a half seconds. This does 6.2, so I mean, that car has like 670 horsepower as well, so. That is basically its direct competitor. This car is way, way, way faster. It is also faster than a BMW M5 CS, which is one of the fastest four-door cars you can buy right now. But this is actually the fastest four-door car we have tested. That is how quick it is. Stop, that is. So we do have a bit of wind noise, of course, from those frameless windows. Carbon ceramics, very nice now. In race mode, yeah, very good, sir. In race mode, the regen is on the setting one uh, default. So you can change that. And that is like the most natural setting of uh, regeneration, which is great. Now, this car does not feature a 48 volt stabilization system like uh, the Panamera, for instance, does have. This just has regular air suspension combined with adaptive dampers. So, I was not getting electric power when I put my foot down. I could see it over there, it was at zero, and I felt it. So, that is pretty weird. Now we do have it. But it is such an impressive car. It really is. It does deliver on performance. And I was a bit worried because it weighs 2,400 kilos that it was going to show its weight and sort of take away from that 843 horsepower, 1,400 newton meter 
power figure, you know, that it would not feel like that. But I have to say, I've experienced a couple of times today putting my foot down and just being surprised by the amount, especially the amount of torque this thing generates. It is super impressive. And another really impressive number to support that is that this car, we measured the quarter mile. What happens? Oh, it just grips. And another thing that supports that power figure is the quarter mile time we measured. We did a 10.52, uh, which is just ridiculously quick. It is quicker than an B it is quicker than an Aventador SVJ. It's quicker than a BMW M5 CS. Quicker than a Porsche Taycan Turbo S. Um, and we've seen some numbers floating around the internet: 10.8, 10.9. Well, it is just way quicker than that: 10.5 which is just crazy. So here we go again. It picks up so well and everything that is happening underneath, all those complex systems working together to give me the ultimate boost in power. I mean, this is seriously impressive. It just keeps going. Sometimes with those hybrid cars you feel like, you know, the power is decreasing at high speeds. Well, this is not. That was 310. Mainly because that super smart cooling that they are doing inside the direct liquid cooling means that you keep having that performance. You can do it numerous times. You just have that performance all the time. You can also see the battery is still almost at three quarters. So I've been extracting a lot, but the car has just also been charging a lot. So let's go. We do have a little gap here. We have to be lucky with the car that is overtaking the truck right now, but we'll see if we can get close to that 316 top speed. Ah, he's overtaking. not at an overtaking rate. So, in conclusion, I think the most impressive thing about this car, and the thing that surprised me most, is that the driving dynamics have not been hurt that much by the added weight. I mean, you can slide this car around so easily. The weight distribution is absolutely perfect. The only th real thing that is hampered by that weight is the, you know, the braking. When you hit the brakes, you feel like, okay, I have to slow down a lot of weight. And I think that could surprise you. That's the only thing that is impossible to hide. The rest of it, mega impressive. And uh, well, I'm quite surprised by it actually. So that is it for this review. I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly enjoyed making it. This car has surprised me so much. It is just hilariously powerful and actually able to cope with the weight, which I was totally not expecting. So that is a really good thing. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. You can subscribe by clicking the big button in the middle. You can also check out this video on the right or this playlist of reviews on the left. See you at the next one. Bye.